So a couple of weeks ago, you all know that the Democratic Party establishment was embarrassed when their favorite candidate, Elliot Engel, lost in a landslide to Jamal Bowman in New York's 16th Congressional District. I mean, he was endorsed by Andrew Cuomo, the Congressional Black Caucus, uh, I believe Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton. They even brought out her dusty ass to endorse him, and he still lost. And we haven't gotten the official results yet. Like, we don't, we don't know for sure that he won. But he won, right? They're still counting absentee ballots. However, uh, Elliot Engel is clinging to whatever hope he can find. And he is hoping that if he sues New York to invalidate some of these absentee ballots, maybe he could clinch victory. Maybe just maybe. So this is pathetic. He should just concede and congratulate Jamal Bowman, but he's not stopping. And as Akila Lacey of The Intercept reports, more than two weeks since New York's Democratic primaries, Jamal Bowman maintains a double-digit lead over Democratic Representative Elliot Engel, who has filed a presumptive lawsuit preserving his campaign's right to challenge the validity of absentee ballots. With all 50,575 in-person ballots counted, Bowman, a former middle school principal backed by Justice Democrats and the Democratic Socialists of America, America leads Engel by more than 12,600 votes. Absentee ballots, meanwhile, are still being counted with delays caused by the historic number of absentee ballots cast because of the coronavirus pandemic, around 765,000 distributed in New York City alone. The Board of Elections has said it is not sure how long it will take to finish counting absentee ballots, though the Bowman and Engel campaign say they've been told that it will take until early August. In New York's 16th Congressional District, there are more than 12,000 outstanding ballots in the Bronx and 27,000 1,382 in Westchester, according to election officials. Among in-person voters, Bowman got around 15,000 votes in each county, while Engel received 9,607 votes in Westchester and 8,405 in the Bronx. Westchester County officials expect they will begin counting absentee ballots for the congressional race by Monday. The Bronx County Board of Elections did not respond to a request for comment, but Bowman is leading absentee ballots there, according to his campaign. Jerry Goldfeder, a longtime election law expert in New York City is representing Engel's campaign in the lawsuit, which was filed on July 1st. Engel's campaign is seeking the ability to oversee the absentee ballot counting process and the right to contest those ballots. Bowman's campaign has said the lawsuit would unnecessarily prolong the campaign and could disenfranchise voters. Given Bowman's 25-point lead, a substantial portion of the 40,000 absentee ballots would have to be invalidated for the race to tip in Engel's favor, a highly unlikely scenario. It is not unusual for campaigns to file such lawsuits in close races, but it's less common when the gap is so large. We recognize that Mr. Bowman's lead is substantial, but when the outstanding ballots are well more than three times that margin, it is also clear that primary voters deserve a clear and accurate count, with ballots in question examined fairly by each campaign, however long that requires, Angle spokesperson Tom Watson said in a statement. Fun fact, Tom Watson actually has me blocked on Twitter. But um, <laughs> moving on, uh, look, this isn't going to change the result. What we're seeing here is desperation. In the same way that Joe Crowley made a desperate attempt to still win after he lost the primary in 2018, this is what we're seeing from Elliot Engel. If you'll recall, Joe Crowley was also on the Working Families Party ballot line, so he'd still be on the ballot after he lost the Democratic primary, but just running as a third-party candidate. And AOC called this out, right? He's basically trying to take votes away from her and pave the way for the Republican to win. This is the same argument that, you know, Republican or that Democrats use against uh, progressives when it comes to the need to defeat Republicans. But yet an establishment Democrat was doing it to a lefty. So that was desperation. What we're seeing now is just more desperation. He's not going to win. But, you know, if he were able to disenfranchise voters and invalidate a sizable portion of absentee ballots, that maybe maybe tip the scales in his favor, it's a possibility, which is exactly why he's doing it. This isn't something that is necessarily unusual, but it's something that you would only expect if the gap was closer, as the article points out. But Jamal Bowman beat him in a landslide. So the fact that he thinks that even if he's lucky enough to invalidate every single absentee ballot, that he would still win is kind of delusional. But I mean, 
He's desperate. Now, if the shoe were on the other foot and Jamal Bowman was the one who lost and was trying to invalidate absentee ballots, the response would be predictable from the Democratic Party establishment. They would be saying, why aren't you rallying behind Elliot Engel? Why aren't you endorsing and supporting Elliot Engel and telling all of your supporters to support Elliot Engel? I mean, do you want the Republican to win? Why aren't you supporting the Democrat? Why aren't you voting blue no matter who? But you see how they operate when the shoe is on the other foot. They refuse to concede. They try to, you know, find some type of sneaky way to stay on the ballot in hopes of maybe still winning, possibly, even though that's unlikely. Whatever they can do to cling to that little strand of hope that they can find, that's what they're going to do. And it's pathetic. But nonetheless, this is what we've come to expect from the Democratic Party establishment. So each time we oust one of their leaders like this, it really is huge. And even after we oust a member of the Democratic Party establishment, I mean, the tricks don't stop, right? They still try to find some sneaky way to undermine the will of voters. I mean, we see this in elections where, you know, they will um, purge voters from the registration list. This happened uh, in New York, I believe Brooklyn in 2016. Um, they'll have closed primaries. They'll try to find ways to strip away access to NGP Van of their primary opponents. Or in the case of Debbie Wasserman Schultz in Florida's 23rd Congressional District, she literally bought the web domains of her primary opponent, Jen Perlman, so she can't have her own like website with her name. It's They do all of these dirty tricks, and the tricks don't end. The dirty tactics don't end once they lose. They fight to the very end until there's no fight left. Um, and it's not going to pan out in favor of Elliot Engel. I'd su be surprised if it did, but I still want to highlight it because, damn, this is really pathetic and embarrassing, and he should be ashamed of himself. Why aren't you supporting the Democratic nominee, Elliot Engel? Why aren't you endorsing and telling your supporters to rally behind him, Elliot Engel? It's funny how unity only goes one way for the Democratic Party establishment. Beta male, not a beta male.